Hello everyone and we're finally back to the Unreal series. So this got delayed because I am going to start my Patreon soon and I needed to record some stuff for that. So hopefully like most of it is done. I have maybe like a couple more videos to do. Uh, I'll add a small trailer to that at the end of this video. Uh, if everything goes according to plan, I should launch it next week. Okay, but anyways, that's a different thing altogether. So we're finally back to this. Okay, so once you, uh, in this video, uh, we're going to take a look at how to build materials. So once you reopen your file, it will go back to like the base setup again. And what you can do is the level that we had created, which is this form level, you can double click on that and it will reopen the level for you. And uh, we also had the sequencer open. So it, show, it shows you down here, like one asset editor was open when editor was last closed. Would you like to reopen them? And you can click open. If this doesn't show up, you have this option called short one, which is what we had created. You can double click on that and that's fine as well. But we can click open here and it'll reopen this. And then I can just lock the camera to the viewport. And so we are back to where we started which is this. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to take a look at basics of shade or building. And we'll also see uh, how to bring in the vertex color data that we have. Okay, now, when you import an Alembic, it doesn't show you an option to import vertex colors, but it does import them. Okay, it just it doesn't tell you that it is imported them. Now, if it doesn't show you the vertex colors, like when we build the shade or uh, that means there is a bug and you might have to recreate the Alembic and re-import it. Okay, like the first time I was trying to do it, it just refused to import it, like it did not work. But then I made another file and I redid the same thing uh, and I re-exported from Houdini and it imported the vertex colors. So there's probably like a bug in there somewhere. But anyway, like 99% of the times it, it just works. Like you don't need to do anything. Okay, so... Uh, the way to build a material in Unreal is it's a two stage process. Okay, in the sense that you first build a material, you create all your parameters that you want. In that way, it is very, very similar to the way Houdini works. Okay, like if you go very deep into the warp level stuff in material in the material network, you'll get your principal shader. But then when you want to expose parameters, you know, for the material level, you'll create parameters and connect them. And then when you come up, you'll see those specific parameters exposed. So that's very much how the Unreal system works. Okay, but the way the second step you need to do is once you build your material, you create an instance of it. Okay, so the reason for that is that Unreal is a game engine. Okay, the core material that you build is called like a master material. Okay, and uh, Every, every master material needs to be compiled when you run the game. But if you create an instance of it, like if you create 10 instances of that, the it doesn't compile the 10 instances, like those are sort of free. Okay, so it only compiles one material and then the instances don't need to be recompiled or anything. Okay, so that's why you work it this way. So the advantage is, let's say you have 10 objects with vertex color. So you can create one master material where you create your vertex color and the parameters that you want. And then you create 10 instances of it and just assign them to 10 different objects. Let's say each one is supposed to have some different, you know, parameter level control. So the instances can have different, you know, parameter variations, uh, but it only compiles the master. Okay, so always remember that, like make your master shader and then you create instances of it. Okay, anyways, we're going to cover that, but just to let you know. Okay, so what you do is you right click here and you create a material. And we'll call it vertex color material. Now you can't have spaces. Okay, so you have to do like a, you do like an underscore. Okay, and uh, the way it works is pretty simple. Just double click on it and you'll get like a basic material. So you get the material here and you get uh, the parameters of it over here. We're not going to go through this, not right now, but on a very basic level, what Unreal does is uh, in order to make the compilations, you know, faster, 
you get a variety of materials okay like if you click here uh, yeah like if you click on the blend mode so you have like opaque mass translucent so depending on what you want like if you if your object does not have any opacity then you just use the opaque shader okay like you'll see like a lot of stuff is is hidden okay so the, or none of these are are applicable right now so the opaque shaders get compiled the fastest and then you have translucent shaders they get compiled like if you want to do glass or something that's a translucent shader and that will get compiled like the slowest so you have different options that you need to like you know depending on what you want so for general purpose hard surface modeling you just keep it to like opaque okay so right now we don't need to do transparency or anything so we don't need to modify this okay and then you have more options down here like what you like you know how else the translucency is supposed to work and all of those things but for the, for our purposes this is perfect okay so the way it works is uh, you can right click here and let's say if we want to just do like a basic color and like we want to expose these you know in an instance and then modify them so what you can do is you can just right click here and we can create like we can create a vector parameter so this is for color and let's say we call this as a base color okay and we can give it a default value if we want so let's say the default value is red okay not for anything just you know just like that and i can drag and click it to base color and if you want to disconnect it you can right click here and you can say break link okay so that will allow you to disconnect it okay because just sort of dragging it out doesn't work okay and let's say if we just want this much so what i can do is i can click save and if i close it now don't assign this okay what you do next is you right click here and you say create material instance and let's say we'll call this you know this is fine so what i can do is i can drag and drop it onto this guy and this assigns one you know see there you go and then let's say i want something similar for the base as well so i can right click here sorry i can right click on this guy and create another material instance okay and i can drop it on you know on the background okay and the advantage of this is now i if i double click on this this can have a completely different color so you'll find like the base color you turn it on and let's say this is going to be blue so even though they are coming in from the same original material the instances can have different parameters okay and as i said like compilation becomes faster so anyways we don't have to worry about that one right now but let's say now if i want to add additional parameters to this i can double click here and i can start adding let's say i want metallic specular and roughness as well so i can right click here and you can take a scalar parameter so scalar is like a float value and vector is color okay and let's say we'll call it metal and i'll make two of these so control c control v okay and so this one will be specular and this will be roughness okay and so let's say the default roughness value is 0.2 and the default specular value is 1 and metal is zero okay and then we can just connect them if you don't want to create a parameter or and you just want to have like a value you can right click and you can take a constant so you can have a constant that's a float or you can have like a constant vector okay so these uh, you can control the value but they won't show up in the material instance okay they'll just remain here so in that way as i said it's very similar to to houdini like in houdini also in the material editor you get like a constant node okay so you can so that doesn't show up at like surface level okay like when you come up to like sop or in the material network so if you want to expose something at the material network or in like you know above warp level you have to create a parameter okay like that's the same same rule that applies here okay so now just save this it will compile it and now the nice thing is when i come to let's say we come to this base shader see now it has specular so if i come in here and i'll turn on base color let's make it something slightly better and then if let's say i want this to have you know like a little less roughness see you can see it sort of change over there in the background as well you can see it change see 
and let's say the background I want it to be uh, metallic you know just for fun so I can turn on metal and roughness and I'll make it one see so the background is metallic I can give it some roughness if I want so you can do stuff like that okay so this is fine okay uh, let's do one thing let's rename this we'll rename this to uh, let's say base material yeah and I'll rename this to base material instance okay so uh, let's say like that's the absolute basic okay now let's say we'll create a vertex color material okay so I, I'll leave this the way it is I'll make a new one for that okay so I'll create a new material let's call this as vertex color material okay and I'll double click here and the way it works is you can just right click here and take vertex color and if I just connect it to base color I'll save it I'll create a vertex I'll create a material instance and I'll do a drag drop onto this guy I'll get rid of this one and see there you go so if everything is done right you'll automatically be able to see your vertex color now I had left it to black and white uh, because I want to just use it as a mask okay so if I if I want to recolor it it's easier to recolor it here okay so now that this is done let's say I want I don't want it black and white let's say I want to give it some color so I can plug the vertex color through like a mix node so double click here now a mix in unreal is called a linear interpolate okay so you can also type in lerp so linear interpolate is lerp okay so you can just click that and now I want to create uh, a couple of vector parameters so let's call this color A and con control C control V and this will be color B let's make this white for the default value and then what I can do is I can just you know drag these up here and this comes into A this comes into B and we'll just pick up like it's black and white so I'll just pick up the R and plug it into base color and so if I save this and we'll come to our vertex come to our instance and we can turn these on and now I can recolor this so let's say if I just take this to like a dark blue or something see there you go and let's say this will be maybe like a pink or something okay let's change the base color yeah this one and let's make it slightly darker okay so this is fine now let's add like a few more parameters to this so maybe like and you can do a lot of things with it you know like as I said the rules are very similar to what uh, you know what you do with Houdini so uh, let's say if I want to also have like maybe I want like emission so I want these bands to glow so what I can do is you'll find something called emissive color but I also want to create parameters for like you know metal roughness and specular so we'll again just I'll just give it like a scalar parameter there are shortcuts for this but I forgot them <laughs> okay so we'll call it the same thing metal and control C control V control C control V okay and we'll call this specular yeah you can like click here near the name and it will allow you to change it over there and we'll call it roughness okay. and the same thing so we'll make it 0.2 and this will be 1 okay and I'll just plug this in yeah see so you'll automatically you'll immediately be able to see it okay now I also want to control the emissive color so I'm going to duplicate this so do control C control V the same vertex color value will will connect here and rename these like parameters can't have the same name so you will have to rename them okay. as I said same rules as uh, as Houdini okay. now the problem here is you only have emissive color you don't have intensity Okay, so what we can do is we can take this color data 
and then multiply it with a separate scalar value. Okay, so I can create a scalar parameter. I'll call it emit intensity. Let's put an underscore in there. Yeah. And we'll take a multiply. And so I can plug in these two. And this will be a default intensity of one. And I can just plug that into emissive color. And if you've done it right, you might see a little bit of a glow in there. See, there you go. Okay. So now what I can do is I can come back to my instance and you'll find like all of the parameters that you want. So I can just turn on all of them. Like if I want it slightly metallic, I can do that now. I can give it more roughness if I want. Now what I can do is I can take the emissive color and let's make it maybe slightly reddish or yellowish. And what I can also do is I can take this intensity and I can just really jump it up. So let's make it 10. There you go. Now there are ways to c control the bloom and glow and everything as well. But we'll do that once we come into like the post processing stuff. So yeah, there you go. So the reason I exported like, and I don't think you can import more than one attribute. Like you can only import this, the color data. Like you can't import like a custom attribute. Okay. I hope they add that, but I don't think that option is there as yet. Okay. So this is as far as like building a really basic material with, you know, simple parameters. So the next video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at uh, how to build a material that has textures. Okay. So because I did build a texture for the background. So we'll do that with the next video. And I'll attach like a small trailer to my Patreon stuff uh, at the end of this one. So if you're interested, uh, I haven't like the website, the Patreon stuff isn't live as yet, but just to get an idea of, you know, the stuff I'll be putting up there. Okay. So if anyone's interested next week, I'll upload like a proper trailer so you can sign up for that as and when it gets launched.